Hello everybody and welcome. Let me try and get an angle where the sun's not right in the camera, but I wanted to bring you around and talk about black walnuts. I have a number of these on my property and I've always heard about jug loans, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but it'll focus on, I'm going to show you why I'm going to cut this tree down. Then I have another one that actually has a multi, actually has more than one reason other than it's growing out of the side of my house. Um, and then there's two that even though I'm worried a little bit about jug loans, they're actually in a good spot to grow to be healthy, mature trees. So I'll give you a couple of channels that actually have real life experience dealing with these trees. Um, so hold on and s I'll flip the camera around. All right. Like I said, this is the first tree that we're gonna cut down because it is really ground out of the side of my house here. So we're gonna cut it down to ground level and the reason why we're gonna do it this time of the year is because I have more mature trees that are right right above there. You can see it's a 50, 60 foot, and they've already started dropping their fruit. So they've reached, um, they've reached the end of this year's cycle um, just before leaf fall. So this would be the best time for me to um, cut down this tree, and then in the spring, or maybe during the end of this year, I'll have to watch out for growth to make sure um, I had it off because at this point we're just trying to we're not worried about the roots underground because those will be eaten up by the the soil the life in the soil we just don't want it to grow so we're just every time it tries to regrow and put on leaves and get solar energy we'll just cut it off so I want to show you this other one that's by the chicken coop now this tree that we're about to come up on is both in the way and we're worried about jug loans. Now jug loans, I've done some research on it, kind of hard for me to understand, but jug loans is a chemical that will be ex secreted, excreted. Anyways, the roots themselves will actually take, you know, put out a chemical when the tree is in danger, if it's in strain, like drought conditions, you chopping it down, this and that. But it'll inhibit the growth of things around it. Now, I couldn't get any actual real data on what plants don't grow. Um, there's a channel called Edible Acres, and there's a Stefan Sokobiak. If you want to look at their channels, they go more into depth on what triggers the release of that chemical and what plants uh, seem to grow just fine around them. So I'm not sure exactly if it's a pH change like pine trees those acidify the soil around them that's why things like blueberries seem to grow around those trees um, however i tried to especially when cutting down a tree or anything like that gardening i tried to find more than one reason to get rid of something as you can see it's already grown quite a lot this year and it's a, i can't afford to have a 50 foot walnut growing in the middle of my mulberry and cutting off my autumn olive which i really want to actually keep and we have plans also to expand this chicken coop somehow so getting rid of this tree right now at this time of the year just makes sense because it will be in the way and there's a couple more that i will get rid of but i want to show you a couple over here that i'm actually going to keep because they're in really good spots now here on the side of my property I think this is an alder. I'm going to let that one grow. There's some thistle in there. Uh, there's a cedar. Uh, I forget what kind of flower. It doesn't matter. But anyways, this on the side here, there's a black walnut. And looking at the size and placement of it, I can afford to have that tree grow to be out here, you know, in 70 years. I can afford to have that grow and just manage the limbs that come off of it. You see that mulberry down the way? I keep that trimmed so that it doesn't block any trucks or anything like that. And it's a bit of upkeep, but it's upkeep that I'm willing to do because to have a large food bearing, nut bearing tree on my property in a place that um, it has plenty of room to grow and I'm not worried about it um, leaching any sort of chemicals through here. Now I do have cedars and pines. There's a cedar, pine, cedar. 
there's another cedars but the idea was to have a wall of evergreen growth there's a little pathway that kind of comes through um, but this is going to be a wall so to add to the complexity of it we'll have a walnut tree here as well and maybe that one we might keep I suppose the point is, is I'm looking at some whole bunch of goldenrod the point is that I don't want to I wanted this area to grow as wild as it possibly could um, and with limited knowledge about how the juglones works I actually have a number of heartnut trees which are Japanese walnuts planted throughout and they're on the invasive species list in some states which um, I don't know if there's enough scientific evidence to back up that um, that tree being placed on there um, so I'm not worried too much about the juglones themselves I kind of keep it in mind and realize that some stuff might struggle however I plant so densely with so many different things until given any more evidence I'm not gonna it's not gonna be a key factor in me cutting out a tree now if it's gonna start tearing up a walkway and mess up the side of my house then I'll cut it down um, there's plenty of other walnuts grown on this property so that's a little bit about how I determine what kind of what what I manage what I don't manage um, if it's if it's not bothering anything let it grow please check out edible acres I know he just filmed within the last couple of months a video showing like mulberries and all sorts of stuff that grow just right under the canopy of a walnut and Stefan Skobiak did have one where he was saying that um, the chemical drug loans actually only came out when it was under you know extreme stress and I don't remember what the stress levels were and how we figured that out um, but they're a much better source than me. I'm just here to tell you what, what I'm doing and what some of my thought process is. Um, so thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. All right, bye-bye.